Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning. Bishop Wayne Smith, we're coming to you live from Ontario, California. Our overseer is Apostle Ken Smith. We just want to welcome you in the house this morning. We pray that you are blessed. Father, we pray that everything this day is according to your will and according to your way. We pray that earth aligns with heaven on this day. We move in a mighty way, something that would be pleasing unto you, and that somebody might see and know that you alone are God. We thank you. We Now we call up our apostle Ken Smith is going to come forth and bring the word. Amen? Amen. I need you to write some things 
put some things together. Because there's some things the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this hour that we've been doing things, some things the same way. The same way each and every time we come together. And for years we've been doing the same thing. But God says, I want more. Is that alright? And so last week, last week we were talking about Daniel. And then so talking about Daniel, I was telling you, Daniel was adamant about prayer. So I want to say Daniel was serious about prayer. Daniel was serious about prayer. Look at your neighbor and say, am I serious about prayer? Serious about prayer? See, see, look at your neighbor and ask him, am I serious about prayer? But better yet, say, are you serious about prayer? You know, one of the things that I found is that we pray, but in some instances, we don't know how to pray. And I want to get to some things. I want to say, well, how are you going to tell me? What are you going to tell me I don't know how to pray? I've been praying for all these years. Well, one of the things that I want you to do is that, that you'll understand. When we were talking about Daniel, I took you through some places. I'm not going there today, so I, I have to start in, in one specific spot. Remember this word, um, as we were talking about in correlation to Daniel last week, in Jeremiah chapter 33. Somebody say Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Chapter 33. Chapter 33. And verse 3. Now, the reason I'm giving you these scriptures, I want you, you to have to work with me, okay? <laughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah uh, received the word, and the word from the Lord was this. He says, Call unto me, and I will answer. Look at it. He says, if you call, he says, call. Who's the one that's doing the call? Who wants you to call? Who wants you to do the call? God. So God says, call. Call me, and I will call unto me, and I will answer, and do what? Show you. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm so he says, he says, call unto me, and I will answer and show you great and mighty things. Now, now one, one interpretation says, great and unsearchable things, things which have been confined and hidden. What, what literally the Father is saying, I'm going to open the word or open things unto you, things that you can't Google. And go to Wikipedia. There's some things I want to give to you that no one else can give you but me. He says, I want to give you. You ever been looking for answers? Looking for the sense of understanding? James said it in this fashion. James said, he says, if any man lack wisdom, let him up ask of God who gives to all liberally and upbraid it. Or he says, that won't hold it back from you. God wants, tell somebody, God wants to give you the insight to the places and things that you're searching. Amen. And so, so when, when I'm coming to this, you know, we, we understand with Daniel, Daniel was in that place. Remember when we talked about this, what had transpired with Daniel is he went to the king. And so going to the king, excuse me, the king sent to the Chaldeans, he, he called for the magicians and the saucers, and the king said... This to them. He, king says, I had a dream. One Dr. King. He said, I had a dream. And I want you to interpret my dream. But I'm not going to tell you the dream. I want you to figure out what I was dreaming in my bed. And, and interpret this dream. So the king said, listen, I want you to construct my dream yes. and deconstruct it because I want to know exactly what, what was this dream troubled my heart. Now the king said this. He said, now if you can't do it, I'm going to kill you. That's some cold stuff, right? And the king, now, now I had to tell you all this because the king even decided how he wanted it done. He said he'd go, basically he'd go tie one arm to a tree, real tight, another arm to a tree, and your legs the same way. And then what they're going to do is they're going to cut them at the same time. So you know, he said, I'm going to cut you in pieces. 
if you can't tell me my dream. Now, I know this, you know, I don't know, you know, can you tell me what I'm thinking? Not at all. Well, if you can't, I'm going to have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> the king literally is telling them, this is what I'm going to do. Now, I want you to understand something because he put all these individuals. And so Daniel's a part of this in this regard. All these wise individuals, people that were supposed to be able to get get into places that others couldn't get. Let's call it they could get into the supernatural realm. Amen. And they could hear things that others could not hear. Amen. He said, I want you to tell me what this meant. This troubled my heart. That's, that's awesome stuff. So here, here we, what we're looking at is that the Chaldeans, they recognize we can't do that. In fact, they were saying, hey, just tell us the dream. He said, what you're looking for is you're just looking for more time. You want to buy some time because if I tell you my dream, then you're going to just tell me some stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, I don't want that. You have to tell me this dream. Now, here's the part. So the king said, listen, I want you to kill him. Told the executioner to go forth and kill him. That's awesome. Just go. You, they can't bring it out and start killing them. Mm -hmm. So they went to Daniel. The executioner came to Daniel. Now, I don't know about you. Anybody here pray? Y'all said y'all pray. Yes. Yes. Because yes. if they came to you and said, we're going to execute you. Okay. If you can't get this information for me. Then your life's going to be taken. Daniel was different. Can I be real with you? Daniel was different than any of us would have been. Uh, that's dumb because I want to say it like this. They come to me talking about they're going to kill me. First of all, let's, say, let's stop and pray right now. <laughs> Daniel said, listen, take me back to the king. I don't want to go see the king. Let's get some, you know, Daniel, what I want to get to, because I want you to understand something. Daniel had a relationship with God. Daniel had a relationship with God whereby it was, if you will, the father was relating to Daniel what his will and desires was. He was relating to Daniel what his will and testament was. Daniel, Daniel was to tell you Later on, at another point in time, he had been studying Jeremiah. He said he was studying the book. And so he was studying the book because he was looking at the script or looking at this word so that he could be able to see and understand what God was saying. He had an intimate relationship with God. And so because of it, God was already giving him or relating to him what he desired. I must be in the wrong house this morning. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand something. We have missed it in the place of prayer because usually when we start praying, we pray without seeking the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. And the Father is the one that wants to make His will known. Oh, I must be in the wrong house. Mm -hmm. You can't move. I'm going to get to this because every believer... The Spirit of God. How, how many think, you know, so, man, I just felt like I, you ever got the unction to pray? Mm -hmm. <sighs> Some of you even set aside, I'm going to set a time to pray. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You don't get this of your own accord. You think, tell somebody I'm smart. <laughs> you think you know what it is that you want, but in reality, as a Christian, the Holy Ghost puts it even on your heart to pray. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We're going to get to all this. I'm going to show you. And so this is why we got to walk through some places because some of our prayers say, well, God, why am I not getting here? I feel like, man, I'm not getting anywhere. I don't see the answers. Look at what Jeremiah said. He says, call and I will answer. We're supposed to tell somebody we're supposed to get answers. He says, when you call, I'm not going to, I might, 
He said, I, I will answer. This is in the Old Testament. You're going to see it also in the New. God wanted them to understand and know his will. So prayer, and I'm going to get to this. We're going to take our time. Was all right, y'all? We're going to get to this because it's imperative right now for us to get in this place that the Holy Spirit can be reveal the will of God through his word and even how to pray. Tell somebody, if I pray according to the will of God, I will see answers. I will see answers. And the, and the word declares, the word, somebody say the word declares. The word declares. That it's supposed to happen right away. That it's supposed to happen right away. Why have we been waiting so long? See, God says, I'm, literally, can I tell you this? He told me the other day, and I won't get to this, but I want to tell you this. He says, son, you're selfish. Now, wait a minute, God. The father said, you're, you're selfish. What he was telling me was I was self-centered. And he said, the reason why some things are not translating or coming forth in your life the way that you should, they should be. He said, because you're selfish. Huh? <sighs> said, Lord, you, you, ever, you ever get somebody and say, you have to break that down. I don't really understand. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you don't want to tell the father. If the father says you're selfish, you don't want to tell him, no, no, you missed it on that one. <laughs> <laughs> But God said, the reason why I say that you're selfish, son, he says, because your own self-centered desires for certain things are overriding my desire for my will. He said, what you want screams out louder than what I'm speaking to you. No, 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 no. He said, the way you want to do it overrides how I'm saying to do it. Y'all get that? You ever do this? It's okay. God understands my feelings. It, it's okay because God knows me. You ever did that? Not anymore. But the word says such, such and such. But it's okay because God, God knows me. He says you're selfish. Self-centered. I'm trying to move you in a whole other place. I'm trying to get you to flow by my spirit. That I can cause things to happen in the earth realm. And you're a hindrance to those things. That mess you up, huh? So God, could you give me a better interpretation of what you're saying? <laughs> Tell somebody, I don't want to be selfish. Amen. 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 Now, now, can I just help you out for a second? Before we move on, so I can get back to this. Does this make sense to anybody? Mm -hmm. Everybody looking at me like, could you do something to make us <laughs> But he said, you're, you're selfish, self centered. What you want and what I desire, he said, I have a will and a testament. And I tell you what I want. And you keep crying to me what you want. I'm asking for you to move in another dimension. And another realm. Amen. But you keep trying to stay in this place. Amen. Where it's all about your feelings and your emotions. He said, I'm not concerned about your emotions. But I am concerned about you moving by the Spirit. Amen. Uh, Anybody committed? Amen. How deep is your commitment? Your commitment to change. To yield to the Holy Ghost. And this is what we're getting. We're gonna, that's why I tell you, I'm telling you say again. Daniel had an intimate relationship with God. Amen. Daniel wasn't moved. Someone said, well, he was a prophet. Because the Lord spoke to him. Can I tell you? Every last one of you are supposed to have some things where God's going to speak to you. His will is going to be made known. You can come boldly into this place with the throne of grace. We're supposed to be a face-to-face -face meeting with your Lord. 
That makes sense? Yes. It will. It will. The Father says, He says, you're selfish. You're self-centered. And how you feel and what you want is moving you so that you're not moving me by my spirit. And trust me, I'm, I'm telling you, I can hear all the things where we say we're going to another realm, another dimension. The Father says, I still have to get, tell somebody, we still got to get rid of the excess baggage. <laughs> you know, if, if we're moving, and to, to, can I be real with you? If we're moving, if you move, if anybody's ever moved to a new location, there's some stuff sometimes you don't want to take with you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. In fact, because you're going to the new place, you start telling whoever's with you, you know what, uh, you know, and sometimes you got to talk people out of some stuff. <laughs> you, you, ever, you ever seen that? You got to talk them out of some stuff. You got to talk them down from some stuff. And, and you got to be nice about it because you don't want to hurt their feelings, but that's not going to go into the car. <laughs> <laughs> that, that just, you know, it, it, it's some, some outfits. Remember some outfits we had from the 70s? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and some stuff we wanted to try to bring back. I seen a man in some hot pants the other day. I said, oh, oh, oh goodness gracious. Remember, <laughs> says Mark, imagine, remember, remember the bell bottoms? <laughs> you know, all of them said, it's some stuff. Sometimes you want to bring it back. That, that's gone. It, it, it's some stuff in your wardrobe. Remember, it's some stuff in your wardrobe. You know, you, you, you can't even get, get around it no more, but you try to bring it back. If I just do this, I'll just add another piece to it. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, I tell you like this. Um, I had some shoes. I'm going to get to this. I had some shoes. Then the shoes were so comfortable. And, and I went to Apostle Nelson's house. And she said, I don't like them shoes, brother. I said, I don't want my shoes. I said, those, those shoes, say, you, you, you don't need to be wearing them shoes no more. She said, I'm going to buy you some shoes. I'm going to buy you some new shoes. Buy them today. I said, okay, but well, I'll still wear these. She said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting you new shoes. We got to get rid of the old ones. I, I agreed to let the shoes go. But what she did, that was to make sure. Because I, I was determined I was going to wear my shoes that, that was comfortable. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You got some stuff that's comfortable. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Fits just right. I don't want to let it go. I like that. So that got to go. So she took those shoes and she took them out and put them in the trash can. I, that wasn't the, the deterrence for me. I'm going to pull them out the trash can. Shoot. Blow those shoes up. They're going to be good. But they put them out there with the dog. Oh. Let the dog play with the shoes first. Because what they were saying is that you can't have them shoes no more. The father said, there's some things that I'm trying to get you to let go of. And you keep going to get it again. Uh oh. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because you're self-centered and selfish, set in your ways. Amen. And you want it your way. We go on there. That makes sense to you yet? It's kind of like Jesus. Jesus said, you know, really, when, when you remember when Jesus came, Jesus, anybody know, know Jesus' purpose? Father made it, made it known. Have, the purpose for you coming, Jesus, is to die. Mm. Right. Your purpose for coming to the earth realm is to die. Mm. To bring, to redeem my people back, to bring forth salvation. Those that were that had the death penalty, I want you to exchange the death penalty for life. Amen. But you have to die. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Jesus, just in an instant, in a moment, he said like this. He said, Father, if there's another way, if you can take this bitter cup from me. Within an instant, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want to get you to this place. I want to get you to this place. You're going somewhere. You just don't know it yet. Sometimes you feel like you're going crazy. So much going on. Father says, no, 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 no. I got you. But I'm still, you know, you just said it just recently. He's decluttering us. Amen. He's taking away some stuff because you've been holding on to it. 
You know you're not going to be able to wear that no more. Yes. <laughs> Let it go. And so he said, you're selfish. And you're centered on yourself and what you want. He said, there's some things that I want to bring forth in your life. You ever been afraid? Anybody afraid to change? Yes. Anybody afraid to change? Yes. Woo! And the Holy Ghost, remember, can I, can I talk to you for a second? The Holy Ghost is having where, you know, you got some stuff in your house you didn't, you didn't have for, you know, 30, 40 years. You know, no, well, 20, 25, you need 20. <laughs> she had it for some years. And the Holy Ghost told you, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> and you done packed it up and made it look pretty over in the corner. But he said, let it go. Because I'm getting ready to do something that can't go where it's going. Some of your relationships. Okay, I gotta get back to this. Okay. Amen. Amen. I like having her around. I like having him around. They gotta go. Decom okay, we gotta go. Amen. Amen. So this place where the father was showing me, he said, You've been selfish, self-centered. He said, but it's hindering where I have to take you. Where you must go. See, see, it's, see tell somebody, it's not about you. It's not about you. <laughs> Woo! You think it's all about you. I'm going to do this and I get back over here. I'm going to get back over here. I remember being, I watched the guy on his 40th birthday. <clears throat> on his 40th birthday, I worked for a phone company. And I was in a warehouse. And I saw this guy. Pull in a piece of machinery. I told the Lord, I said, I don't want to be here at 40. When I turn 40, this is not what I want to be doing. If you didn't call me to ministry, I want to be one of those guys that you say, hey, I don't want to be the, 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 normal, the normal guy, the normal preacher. But I want to travel. What I was agreeing to, I didn't know, but it was the Holy Ghost that had already spoke some things inside. But before, I wasn't even ready to, to agree with those things. Now I'm agreeing with what the Holy Spirit's already put inside of me. Amen. So by the time I was 40, he had me out. Not the way I wanted. But he wants us to agree. Somebody say, he's going to reveal his will. Amen. Amen. And even though you want some things your way, tell somebody, I want it my way. God said, we got to let that go. Amen. Now let me get over here. So Jeremiah said, Jeremiah said, call on me. Jeremiah didn't say it. God said it. God said, call on me. He was talking to some people that had gone astray. And he said, call on me. And I will answer. And show you things yes. Yes, yes. that, you, and I keep saying this, you can't get it from Wikipedia, glory to God. You know, this morning, I had to ask Alexa, I said, Alexa, what's the temperature? Now, now because I got two of them in the same room, two of these devices in the same room, I was talking to one, and the other one was, shit, I'm going to override that one. <laughs> <laughs> And then had the deserve to say, did you get the information from the device you didn't expect it? No, I did not. <laughs> There's some things God said, you're not going to be able to talk to Alexa. Yay. You're not going to go to Siri. You're not going to be able to go to your, you're not going to be able to turn on your computer and find and Google these things. He said, there's some things that I want to reveal to you that flesh and blood cannot. Tell somebody, I'm going to get in the will of God. Amen. How do I get there? Okay, okay. That's what talking about. This helping everybody get So what happens, that's Jeremiah. But Daniel, when Daniel was praying, God spoke literally to Daniel and he was telling Daniel, remember, and with respect to the king, the king that would not tell his dream, the Chaldeans said, what you're saying to, that you're asking for, the only way that can happen is that some being, some God, there's got to be a God somewhere, only God can break forth those things. Mm -hmm. So Daniel's God, 
since the other gods can't deliver. Daniel, Daniel had this relationship, this intimacy with God. And in his intimacy with God, literally what's happening is that he is composed because he knows he's kind of like what, the way Jesus says. Jesus did something that, that just is astounding. Y'all, we, we focus on that situation with, with Jesus and Lazarus. But Jesus said even before he got to the tomb, Jesus was spent, when Jesus began to pray, Jesus said, Father, he said, you and I pray all the time. You and I talk all the time. So this is for those that are eavesdropping. This is for the people that are ear hustling. It's just for those that are that are listening to what I'm saying. Because you and I have already spoken and, and we already know what's going to happen. Amen. Mm. Amen. Tell somebody, this is for your benefit. Mm. There's some things that have happened in our lives we don't understand. God said, I put you on, and if you will, I put you center stage. I wanted everybody to see you going through because they're going to get to see you when you come out. Amen. Amen. like when someone opens the dressing room door and you had just took off all your clothes? <laughs> You've been a gazing stock. And the Father said, I've used that. It's going to be for my glory. Thank you, your situation Thank you, Lord. was used literally because of what I'm getting ready to do, which is a bigger okay. Thank you, Lord. I hope I'm in the right house with you. Mm -hmm. yes. And so, Daniel goes forth in prayer. Now, now because i got to move, I, I want to try to help y'all get to this other place because I'm saying to you, for us in prayer, right? For us in prayer. Let's do this here. Go to Isaiah. Isaiah 65, 24. Isaiah 65, 24. Ooh, glory to God. Tell somebody he's, he's making me work. Y'all want to say that? <laughs> so he, he making me work. Isaiah 65, 24. Okay, watch this. Now, I'm going to show you in Isaiah 64, 65. What is it, 65? 65. 65. Yeah, you got to get this right. 65 and 24. Somebody say 65, 24. <laughs> and he says, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I'm going to do what? Yes. Pay attention to this. Pay attention to this. Somebody say pay attention to this. He says, before you call, I will answer. And, and wait, wait, wait. I want you to really listen to what you just said. Before you made up your mind to get down on your knees, he said the answer has already been prepared. Amen. Wait a minute. God knew what we would pray for before we pray. Tell somebody yes because he put it in me what he wanted me to pray. Amen. Amen. See, it's going to mess you up. Because we've been praying, but if we pray in conjunction with what he wants and he desires, he's getting ready to pray for his will. And I'll show you because if it's his will, that's not if it's his will. You ever, you ever been in a place where people say, God, if it be thy will. I, I, I sometimes I don't want to pray for my Pastor Dunham because if they don't know the will of the Father, you know, you just, you just got to, you know, uh, listen, you just got a, a, a little paper cut. And someone said, God, if it be your will, let him be healed. Otherwise, let him bleed to death. Find out what the will is. God wants to make his will known to us. Some of it is right here before us. So we can walk in this place, walk in these things. Some things... God's going to reveal to you because flesh and blood can't do it. He says, now listen, so one of the things that's happening 
is that prayer is something that God puts together. You know what I don't? Yes. Yes. That's not gonna pray for me because I yeah. I prayed I listen on Instagram. And so what happens, he says to them, he says, before you even call, I'm gonna answer. And I'm gonna show you why why this is happening, but but let's let's just read on. Let me read on. Let me read on. It is, you know. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, tell somebody why you're yet in the midst of prayer. God is answering. Thank you, Lord. And it shall come to pass that before they call, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. You know, we have to ask, answer, I have to answer people sometimes when they call and I say, hey, how you doing, so-and-so? And they say, man, you must be a prophet. I said, no, I have caller ID. <laughs> <laughs> because they, they get so accustomed to you speaking prophetically to them, they sometimes, Pastor Dullard, they just think that, man, you knew that? Oh, no, I didn't know that. But listen, what God is literally saying, God is literally saying to these individuals, he says, before you call, I'll answer. But what's, what's really happening, you've got to get behind the scene. you got to get behind the scene to understand what's happening here. And so let's go to Isaiah 64 and 12. Now I want to tell you, these folks, I know this doesn't correlate to us, but these folks had, had if you will, they had shifted, rebelled, gone away from God, were doing contrary to the things of God, and now, what they do, how you say this, the people have sinned, and they felt the judgment of God, and so they were distant to him. You, know, you ever get in a place where you know something in your life is not right, mm -hmm. and then you feel I like, oh, God, where is it? But it's not God, it's you just walking away. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want to even be in his presence. You don't want to be in the places where the Spirit of God is moving, because you feel that you're not, how you say, you're, you're not good enough. You ever been there? Yes. Had that happened in your life? Yes. And, and, and see, what happens is the enemy uses things like that to cause us to be distant with God. But God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Thank you. See, if you belong to the Father, he's not kicking you out. And he's different from us because, you know, you know it don't take much for us to decide that you can't be a part of the club no more. <laughs> <laughs> You know, more, you know, you 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 no longer one of the people that can, can hang with you. You know what I'm saying? You didn't share your ice cream, you go. You said it in a long time, you go. But with God, He literally has. Can I can I bear with you? God has grace for you. Thank you for your grace, Lord. God didn't give up on you just because you messed up. And we need, can I say it like this? We're still tripping over things in our lives. We're still tripping over things in our lives. But God will tell you, he said, Jesus paid the price for that sin that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. He said, the blood covers. Once you confess, it's gone. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not holding that. I need you to move. And some of us are not moving. We've distanced ourselves from God. Not God distanced himself from us. But we distance ourselves from him because we feel like we're no longer aligned. Anybody go through something in your life? And because you were going through something in your life, you felt like, man, I must have did something wrong. The first thing you say is, I must have did something wrong. And so God has left me. And right how's yet? Now watch this, watch this. So these individuals, what's happening? Because I want you to see how this that word connected. I want you to see how the word connected. The people, because they had sinned, and in the midst of this place where they were at, they felt distant to God to the point that they were now feeling like God's not speaking to me. God's not talking to me. And so they began to say, God, how long are you going to be silent? How long is it going to be in this place where you won't talk? And that's why he's responding to them. Call on me. 
He says, before you even call, I'm going to answer. That's why it's done. So, so, so now, let me get you the scripture. Let me get it. 64, 12. Y'all go there real quick, buddy. Yeah. Okay. So what happens, he says, will thou refrain, refrain, refrain thyself for, for these things, O Lord? Will thou hold thy peace and afflict us? God, you're going to keep on giving us this? How long are you going to be silent towards it? God's not being silent. God has not distanced himself from you. Just because things are not going the way you think they should does not mean God's not in it. Amen. 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 So they were crying out. They were, this, see, see, see how I had to back it up because I want to show you. So the reason why God spoke this word, he was letting them know my relationship with you. My relationship with you has not changed. Mm -hmm. Our fellowship has been broken, but our relationship is the same. Mm -hmm. Now, stay with me for a second. Now, my father will sometimes call me up about and talk to him in a while, and he'll say, Ken, you know that I'm still your father. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know, Dad. You, you, you know. But he's trying to tell me, son, you know, uh, we haven't had fellowship in a while. Ain't nothing wrong with our relationship, but our fellowship, there's something lacking. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 let me go one, one better. Go one better. Go one better. Go one better. Bishop? Bishop? You ever get mad? Now, we, we brothers in the natural and in the spirit. You ever get mad at me? Say, you ain't my brother. Remember what we used to do when we were young? Yeah. Yeah, we did that when we were young. You ever say, you ain't my brother? Yeah. I don't care what you say. <laughs> our fellowship can be broken, Amen. but our relationship is still Amen. intact. Amen. 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 Some of you need to understand where you've been walking, your fellowship is broken, but the relationship is still the same. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Father said, I want to reveal the will. And I won't get this way. I'm going to try to hurry up. Is, is this helping anybody? Yes. The relationship. Because some of y'all, man, and so we, we've been, the enemy has been messing us up with stuff. And God said, no more. No Amen. more. Amen. So watch this. We're establishing something. Because what God is saying is that even to this end, what you're seeing is prayer is something that happens before it happens. Amen. Prayer literally happens before you start to pray. Amen. The Father literally puts this to somebody, he puts it in your spirit. Amen. We call it the unction. I had the unction to pray. I had the unction to pray. What I love it. You ever been around folks and they want you to pray? And, and you feel like I can't pray. It's not my assignment. That's not my, it's sometimes someone said, well, you should pray. I can, and we quote scriptures. You're supposed to pray in season, out of season. Well, it wasn't the season that the Holy Ghost wanted. See, see sometimes your emotions will move you mm -hmm. to pray, to get somebody else to pray when it's your job to pray. Amen. 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 It was meant for you to pray, but you want somebody else to pray. Amen. All right. Y'all look all okay. The Father's bringing us this thing of prayer. It's already in us. You didn't get it. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna set aside some hours. And that's why. Can I be real with you? This is why it's hard sometimes for some of you trying to pray because if you just go when the Holy Ghost is talking to you. You be praying all the time. Amen. You be riding around. You just just find yourself already going in. in you know, if you've got spiritual tongues. You you're in tongues. If yeah. it's not tongues, you be speaking. You'll find yourself just praying because Amen. the Holy Ghost will call it forth. Amen. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute, Holy Ghost. Let's make it plain. Because it's the Holy Ghost that knows what you should pray. Amen. Amen. What I don't want to pray. Amen. Come on, y'all right? Yeah. Yeah. 
No, it, it isn't one that just makes sense to everybody. This one makes sense to everybody. If I say like this, anybody here want to pray for patience? <laughs> Look, she's shaking her head. No, 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 no. Well, anybody here speaking Holy Ghost? Yes. And I'm going to tell you something. People say that. He, he speaking Holy Ghost. Whether you speak or not, the Holy Ghost will shut you down because he wants to speak. Amen. You'll find yourself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because the, even the utterance, the groanings become right. something that's audible to God. And God uses that All right. to speak forth his will. So if you haven't got to one place, God still has you in another. He's going to use what he's given you to be able to minister to, minister to you effectively. That's what God wants you to know. He don't want you to be in the blind. Glory to God. And so what I'm trying to convey to you, one of the things I'm trying to convey to you, I hope it's making sense, is that one of the things I'm trying to convey to you is that you think you're the initiator to prayer. God says, really, I want you to come because I want to give you some insight. There's some things that I want you to get, you can't get there. Amen. There's some places where I want you to go. Amen. It's some places that I'm trying to get you and I want you to go, but you don't want to go. Mm -hmm. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's some stuff that God wants you to do to tell somebody I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Nina, I think you might be better suited some things in that one. <laughs> Ooh. Help me, Holy Ghost. Anybody here just feel like, no, that's that's not something God would really want me to do. Mm -hmm. There may be somebody that, that you know, you, especially if you see somebody, I call them bad actors. That it's reflection of mirrors, you know, they're bad actors. You get that. You know, just hold the mirror up, see the behold that perfect enemy. And so what happens sometimes these bad actors can always see what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they recognize what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. And I think you're suited for the job. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that is nice to know some people that, that you'd be suited to go to and just talk, <laughs> just talk to them. <laughs> can, now, now I want to do this. So I'm going to hurry up. You know, sometimes God chooses you to do something. A fellow by Jonah, Jonah will tell you. God chose him, so I want you to go to Nineveh. And, and Jonah said, can I use my, my own little stuff? Jonah was saying, God, you got the wrong one, baby. <laughs> jo Jonah, because Jonah was in, can I say Jonah was self-centered? Mm -hmm. Jonah was being selfish. Jonah was upset. God, you want me to go? You want me to go to the people? Do you know what they did to my people? Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody do something to your folks. You know how you at? <laughs> Come on now. Y'all probably grew up under the same rules, and uh, you know where if, if, if I'm mad at them, the whole family's gonna be mad at. Them. <laughs> okay, don't be talking to them. I don't talk to them, so you don't talk to them. Holy Ghost said, we can retain some stuff. We can retain some stuff. Amen. Just why this is not going to change. So we've been Christians for a long, long time. God said, yeah, you've grown up, but I want you to mature. And in your state of mature, there's some stuff you're not going to be able to do. Okay, okay, let's get it. This makes sense? Yeah. Makes sense. See, I told you I'm going to be mad at me if you didn't get the jump. <laughs> you didn't get the jump. And maybe we can get everybody to do some calisthenics and then we can go a little further. Glory to God. <clears throat> Listen, so, so he's establishing with these people. He says, he was letting them know they were crying out saying, God, you did us wrong. That sound like us? <laughs> Think you ever did that? God, you did me wrong. You ever, you ever told God it was unfair? Mm -hmm. Pull out my cards. <laughs> you ever pull out the, the card and tell God, you're not fair? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Mm -hmm. 
You see all what's happened in my life, God? This is not fair. Anybody? I guess I'm the only one that's guilty of all <laughs> But now here's the thing. That's what they were doing to God. But God's trying to bring us to this place. If you'll walk by the Spirit, He'll really reveal some things to you. I need you out of your emotions, your self-centeredness. I got to get you out of the place where it's all about you that you can see my will. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody I gave you a gift. The Holy Ghost, excuse me. The Holy Ghost says, the Holy Ghost says, I gave you a gift. Nobody here got one? Woo, Father, we're about to pray about the Spirit of God. My God. That's not they, they, they won't even acknowledge they got gifts. And the Holy Ghost didn't forget anybody. Glory to God. Now I get mad if you took me to McDonald's and everybody got a happy meal with me. Woo. Listen, come on now. Can I be real with you? Everyone here has been given something of the Holy Ghost. It was the will of God. Thank you, Lord. Some of you may not like what you were given. I want it. You'll give I like the way your gift operates. <laughs> your gifts and your talents. Tell somebody I want your talent. Don't nobody even look at me and say, tell somebody I want your talent. <laughs> That's I'm gonna just can I talk to you? You know, I just talk to you because we we know the people, they say they they, they want I want another gift. I don't like my gift. <laughs> You ever get, you give something at what we call Christmas time, you ever give it to somebody and they say, oh, like they gift. And they salivate that somebody else is giving. That show is nice what you got. Look at yours. I want to tell you this. Most of us have been ungrateful as to what the Father has given us. So I want to use it. I'm going to put this gift on the shelf. It's not your gift. It wasn't for you, it was for you to bless others. Mm. Uh, tell somebody I'm the gift. You? No, y'all don't help me, huh? Tell somebody I'm the gift that the Father has given for His people. Now look at your neighbor real good and say. I'm the reason why you've been hindered. Because I won't use my gift. Okay, okay, look, look. Now I want to show you something. Now, now go to First John. Y'all marking your Bibles? I said First John. All right. Yes. First John chapter five. First John five. Now I'm not helping anybody yet. Yes. Amen. I used to love this uh, when I go over here in these passages of scriptures. First John five. First John five. First John five. And then we're going to start with verse twelve. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. And I'm trying to hurry up, man. I'm trying to hurry up. Bro. Now, man, back in the day, I used to, when I'd be teaching, I literally would tell people, you know, um, if you've ever, anybody accepted Christ, I'd tell people, man, you want to look at, this is like your pink slip. But, but because the Holy Ghost has shed light in some things that I, I, I could see the sense of the pink slip. <coughs> now, now somebody looking at the pink slip. The pink slip is, you know, you, ever, you, you had a car and got it paid off. Yeah. I gotta get another analogy. <laughs> they, they like no, no, no. Well, well, if you got the pink slip to the car, it shows that you are the title holder. Right. Right. You are the one that it is possessed. It is your, your possession. You the one that owns it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it's kind of like it's not just like having the receipt. You know, because you can have a receipt and still have it on layaway. 
But 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 in this case, God literally starts bringing forth the sense that there's some things He wants you to see. If you possess these things, now as I'm reading, you're gonna see what I'm saying. But 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 the Holy Ghost began to reveal to me more in the sense of prayer than some of the places that I saw. It's like I get this. He gave me an illumination to see some things differently. And so it's, it's, it's greater, grander than what I had even realized what the Holy Ghost was saying. Thank you, Lord. And so, um, remember, we're talking about prayer. I ain't lost sight of this. Am I talking too much, y'all? No. no. Oh, so, what happens here, 1 John chapter 5, beginning in verse 12. Man, anybody got to amplify it? Because I, I, you know what? Yeah. Anybody got to amplify it? Yes. Yeah. Um, who, who said yes? Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> See that mic? Get the mic. Did you hear me say, ooh? Don't you talking about doing the will of God? She already talking about, ooh, 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 ooh. You don't put me up front, sir. Okay. You need some support. You need somebody to hold the mic for you while you read. Okay, because I was going to call you some help. Call okay, so from the Amplified, I want you to read verses, beginning in verse 12 to verse 15. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? No, 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 no. no, no. First John. First John. First John. First John. First John. 5, 12, chapter 5, verse 12. Yeah. First John, sweetie. I'll tell you what, say, do you like this here? Hey, yeah, I don't want your money. You got to find first John. You know. And the reason, the reason why I say, you know, listen, listen, I'm telling you. Um, I want you to see it. You ran off? No, I'm hiding. Okay, well, well Pastor Nina, you got to have fun? There you go. Come on, you got that fun? Oh, she don't know. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody got come on. You, you got it? Come on, Ray. Yep. You get it, you get it. No, I can't get the mic, though. You got to scared the Google. You didn't get fired. You didn't get fired. We just got, you know. Okay. First John, chapter 5, chapter five verse 12 through 15. Yes. He who has, turn that on. My voice and call me that strong. He who has the Son, by accepting Him as Lord and Savior, has the life. Now hold on, hold on. Listen to what He says. If you ever want to be a Christian, anybody ever want to be a Christian? Mm -hmm. Qualified. There's a qualifier. Mm -hmm. He said, He who has the Son, mm -hmm. He that has the Son, has life. Life. Keep going. Has the life that is eternal. He who does not have the Son of God by personal faith does not have the life. Well, watch this. So, if you haven't accepted the Son, we're going we to cross one of the paths. I want to cross the dots. You know, if you have not accepted the Son as your personal Savior, you're not saved. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they baptized you, dipped you, dumped you. I, 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 don't, I don't care if they said you're a good Amen. person. I don't care what it was. Amen. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Amen. personal Savior, you're not saved. That's true. Amen. Keep going. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God which represents all that Jesus Christ is and does, so that you will know with settled and absolute knowledge that you already have eternal life. Tell somebody I don't have to guess about it. It's not a guesstimation. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to figure it. I don't have to suppose. I don't have to go through any of those things. That, you know, sometimes, sometimes I feel saved, and sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. Am I in the right house with you? Amen. Sometimes you wake up and they tell me that you can wake up on the wrong side of the bed. I don't know what that is. How you get it since you wake up on the same side all the time. You, you, I can tell you got up on the wrong side of the bed. 
What's the wrong side? This is safe. <laughs> but but sometimes you, you get up and you don't feel safe. Mm. It does not change Amen. if you've accepted the son. Keep going. Amen. Amen. This is the remarkable degree of confidence which we as believers are entitled to have before him. That we're in somebody say entitled to. Entitled to. The Father says, this is what you're entitled to. I want you to have something. In other words, he says, I want you to have something. Tell somebody, the Father wants you to have something that is significant, that you can walk in this place. See, the enemy has been trying to beat us over and over again. And the ever, enemy ever told you you ain't saved? Yes. Mm. Of course. Yes. And you, you, you put your head down like, that must not be. Look what I said. Look what I did. The Father is not caught up in those things. That you've been caught up in. He wants you to know. And this is what he gave to him. Amen. Keep going. Keep going. Let's see. If we ask anything according to his will. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. What he says. He said this. He says. Now for the King James it says. And this is the confidence. Mm. That we have. Mm. This is the confidence. That word translated, when we talk about confidence, he talking about this is talking about having the boldness. But that word is also dealt with in a couple of different ways. So he says, to have this boldness, to be able to go forth to him. You ever heard what the Spirit of the Lord says in his word? He says that we are to come boldly to the throne of grace in our time of need. Mm. Yes. He said, this is the confidence that you can have in me. That if you belong to me, and now, now, now what, what we got to get? Now he wasn't just saying that 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 he was the son of God, but he was calling him Emmanuel. Oh, yeah. That is to say, God with us. Amen. So God is with Amen. us, who have accepted Jesus as our personal Savior. God is with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God is with us. Thank you. God is within us. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. God is with us. God is within us. So God wants to reveal His will to us. Keep going. That if we ask anything according to His will. Wait a minute. Now, now, so you understand it. If you ask anything according to what? His will. His will. <laughs> I want a new Jeep. Now, you can't just ask for stuff. I want it to be pink. You can't just, it has to be in accordance to or with his will. So ultimately the Holy Spirit said, I want to reveal the will to you. So you go forth in prayer. If you're praying in accordance to the will of God, you will not be denied. He says, not only do you get it, but before you even call, I'll already answer. <clears throat> While you yet speaking, I've already heard it. Wait a minute. Thank you. That's crazy. Because we've been praying, spending long hours in prayer, but nothing's happening, Pastor Thelma, because we haven't got the will. The Father begins to speak what He desires. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. As the Father speaks what He desires, then we hear what the Father's saying. That's why, that's all we got to tell somebody. We got to get out of just always talking. That's funny, Mister Phil, because the, the you know what's that little dog's name? Max. Max. Yeah. Max. 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 want to talk all the time, huh? Yes. Max want to tell you everything. Absolutely. Glory to God. He looks like the window. Max looks like the window. He want to tell everything to Mama. Glory to God. Well, well I want to tell you something. Sometimes you got to talk to Max. Max, get out that window. Max has to hear. Our problem is we do all the talking like Max. And we'll watch. And don't listen. <laughs> Keep going. Come on, I'll finish. You finish it. Well, I'll make it plain. If we ask anything according to his will, that is consistent with his plan and purpose, he hears us. And if we know for a fact, as indeed we do, that he hears and listens to us in whatever we ask. We also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have 
that we have granted to us the request which we have asked from him. Does this make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. Yes. See, a lot of all do. See, we, thank you. Thank you. This is why I've been trying to get us in this place. That's why I said we've got to calm down. Just hold on. I said, Lord, just, ah. You might have thought I was talking to me. I wasn't really talking to you. I'm just looking over this way. you got pretty shoes on, so, you know. You know <laughs> thank you. But this is, whoo, this is what the Father's trying to get to you. Just about he wants to elevate you. He wants to speak some things into you. And so, so remember why I told you he said you, you're selfish? Well, so, you know, point finger at me. But, but I know I'm not alone, huh? I'm not alone, fine. Come on. Come on, give me high five. Because I'm not alone. No, no, you got to come off your seat. She's going to do me wrong. Get, come on. Come on. Thank you, Mr. Sophia. She just going to do me wrong. You're going to act like her. When you come, say, come on up. She said, no, nah, I ain't. Just do me wrong. You don't give a five? Amen. Amen. No. <laughs> no. Listen, listen. Okay, so let's get back to this. Let's get back to this place. Seriously, what's happening, seriously what's happening is that the Father is trying to elevate us. And even in our prayer, you're going to change how you pray. Amen. Amen. And he'll speak some things. Amen. Let me tell you. Let me do this. Now, I, I got a couple of scriptures I'm going to... Is this helping you guys? Yeah. And a couple other scriptures I'm going to put. Um, what really was funny is because we have been doing things the same way. And the Father downloads new information. He gives you something new. But because you've been accustomed to doing it your way, you go back to the old way. And the Father gave you something new. I was talking to Pastor White the other day. I said, it was something I wanted to speak. And the Holy Ghost said, no. And I was talking about something financial. So it, 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 it's like, it was money matters. And glory to God, I was just simply saying, you know, I was just simply saying that, you know, I don't have the money for that. I don't. I can't do that. You know. I just started talking. Just, 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 just jumped off. You know. You know. We can get caught up in a whole lot of stuff. Right. Gas prices are kind of changing. You may not like it what they're doing at the pumps, and they say, you know, I don't know how to. I don't know how we're going to afford it. You ever, you ever start doing that? Mm -hmm. Start speaking that. Who going to say now? Listen. I didn't tell you to say that. So I said something, and the Holy Ghost said, No, you can't say that anymore. Amen. So I told you no. That's not what we're speaking. Amen. 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 Well, right then I was corrected. But the reason why I was speaking before Deke was because out of my emotions, right. out of my thought processing, out of me. And God said, we're not doing out of you, we're doing out of me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Tell me. Someone tell me what? So tell somebody what? To elevate. You gotta elevate. Mm -hmm. And so what he's saying, and if you watch this closely, he says, I want to give you boldness that, he says, Emmanuel, God with us, you have the confidence, the boldness to come. And really the way it's kind of broken down, it's like that you, you have this boldness, this confidence, because you have this, the, the opportunity to relate to him face to face. God said, I want you to come in other words, what he said, I want an intimate relationship with you that when you come, you can come and you can bring forth some things, but I get to speak to you. You ever tell the Lord when you were praying, like God didn't know? You ever tell God some stuff that, you know, maybe he didn't know what was happening. God, I'm going to need you. You ever tell him, God, I need you to move right now. This situation is really bad. You ever been like that? Yes. Now, you may have changed now, but you know, you know how you used to be, right? Yes. And so in it, God says, I'm trying to, I'm not trying, I'm going to elevate you. Because he's already seen it. God's already in it before you got to it. God already seen it before it transpired. Now he's bringing you to this place 
to walk in a new place. Ah, can it all shut up? And we've been stuck. So somebody, I've been stuck. I've been stuck where God's trying to move me. I want to stay here because it's comfortable. Mm. I like doing it my way. Mm. That makes sense, Jack? Yes. The Father says, no, we're going to change because by the Spirit. Mm. And so what he was saying is that I want you in this place you can have the confidence to know that when you pray in according to my will, mm -hmm. that what you ask for is done. Mm. Come on, this makes sense to you. Yes. If God tell you, this is what I want you to say, is pray. Yeah, God telling you, I want you to speak this. See, prayer comes in a lot of different ways, folks. God may simply say, I want you to speak. Speak this into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody here. God, that don't make sense. You want to pray into You ever, Come on now. Let's go. I was coming in, in this place one day, and the Holy Ghost said, look up. He told me to see something. He said, speak to the north, to the south, and to the east and to the west. And he told me what to say. Now, I could have said it. Oh, that don't make sense. I could have said it doesn't make sense. But out of obedience to the Spirit of God, I did it. What the Father is trying to bring forth is his will. We don't understand what God is doing. Right. Yet he knows. Yeah. And he's bigger than all of us. Thank okay, okay. Yes. All right, let me do this. Yes. I'm trying to get here. Is this helping at all? Yes. Hey. yes. Hey. Sister Linda, that way she got upset with me. See, I asked that too many times. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, go to Romans. <laughs> Romans, let's do this. I gotta, I, I'm trying to, you know, Romans chapter 8. Y'all not going to like that. How many heard this scripture over in Romans? How many heard Romans 8, 28? I like that scripture. Like that scripture? You know it's about prayer? Yes. And so most people don't. And we like to use it. It, 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 it satisfies. It's, it's, it's sufficient. It, it works. Um, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according. Right? That's yes. good, right? Yes. That is good. Yes. But the whole thing, really, when you get over here, Begin at verse 26 mm -hmm. through verse 30. It's, it's really about prayer. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now watch this. I've already said some of this, but he said, likewise, in verse 26, and I'm trying to move fast. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. Mm -hmm. For we know no, for we know not what we should, we don't know what we should be praying. Right. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I made that up before, huh? Nope. Now it confirms you don't even know what to pray for. Amen. You don't know how to pray. Amen. How do I go forth and pray? Amen. How do I ask? For, you know, we're asking for some things even for the sense of government. We're asking for things even in terms of how the government is supposed to run. But we have to find out what the will of God is. Amen. Not from our emotional state. Amen. Not from what I think or how I feel, my opinions. But what does the Holy Spirit really say concerning the matter? Mm. I listen to folks talk about God wants this person in prison to be president. He wants that person to be president. They're trying to do this. If we do what we're supposed to, some things will be blocked, they will be stopped, they will be thwarted, they will I'm telling you, it will not move because the Holy Ghost will set everything in place. But we have to do our part. And we have to get out of our opinions. find out what the will of God is. I gotta it. What does he really want? Amen. In this contingency, what does God want and how does he want me to pray for our leaders? Amen. I don't care who's in office. I'm called to pray Amen. for leadership. Amen. I don't care who's, who's in charge. I'm Amen. called to pray for our leaders. Amen. Yes. So I've got to find out what the will of God is. I may not like what's taking place. I may not like who's in charge. But I must pray not based on my opinions and how I feel. My emotions cannot be the ruler. 
They cannot be in charge. They cannot run things. I must hear what thus said the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Amen. Not speculation. Wow. If there's the government level, the Father wants us to be in a place that the will of God is done. Yeah. What about in your own home? Yeah. You may not like certain things that are transpiring, but we've got to learn how to come in this element where the Father is ruling and presiding over everything yeah. about our yeah. lives. Amen. 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 So it says like this. For we know, excuse me, I haven't lost my place. What verse am I at, y'all? 26. We're at 26. 26. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the Spirit also helped our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Man, even if you don't speak in the Holy Ghost, He's still going to take over. Thank you. Yeah. Holy Ghost say, you don't know how to handle this. Well, what, what, why would the Holy Ghost do that? I'll tell you why. Since you asked me, thank you. <laughs> the Holy Ghost literally said, he said, my purpose for being, he says, I come to show you, or you know, literally he's the one that's supposed to show us into all truth, truth mm -hmm. and righteousness. Mm -hmm. So it goes down. Wait, and if you understand what he's really saying, he's not saying just one matter, one situation, a one-time event. This is a, a, a continuum. It was an ongoing thing. Daily, Amen. the Holy Ghost wants to rule and reign in your life so that you and Him walk as one. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody, Father, I want to elevate. Father, I want to elevate. So I got to get out of my emotions. I got to get out of my emotions. Am I right now? Amen. Yes. Jesus. I told people, the, the father at one point, I said, you know, there's some people, they're hard to deal with. He said, my people are not hard. It's just hard to get some people to listen to what I say. Mm. Mm. And I said, yeah, father. He said, yeah, you want them. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, that doesn't mess you up because, you know, you be looking, you know, I'm looking, pointing the finger at everybody else. I can see Sister Deep really well. Oh. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, that's, you know, that's Sister Deep. Okay? That's, that's what Sister Deep. Lord God. So you can lead, you know. And the Father has a way of letting you know. Stop looking at them. Look at yourself. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, he does. Yes, you can does. see everything about them. But it's yes, you that I want you to see. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes, he does. All right, all right. <laughs> so the Spirit make an intercession for us with groans which which cannot be uttered. In other words, you can't you can't come up with the words. You can't put it together. And it's still, it's like you can do, mm. you ever been there? Mm. Oh. Yeah. You ever been there? Yes. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost take over. Yeah. It just cause some things to come up. You said, I ain't going to do nothing, but it just come up. Because this, he's going to speak. You don't know what to. But the Holy Ghost is going to speak. He's going to speak to the Father and going to bring forth so that we can be on court. Let this mind that's in Christ, let it also be. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Ghost knows what it is the Father wants, even to the point that he knows the heart. He knows what the Father really desires for you. He wants to bring you in alignment. So somebody trying to bring me in alignment. I'm trying to bring me into alignment. I got to do this no more. You know, um, went to the grocery store some time back, and I saw a mother uh, and her kid. Obviously, he didn't get what he wanted. And, and so the kid just started kind of like screaming in the middle of the store. You know, he looked like he was about five. You know, and he's big enough to where, you know, I, I'm just going to be real. You know, I, I don't know if I could have handled it quite the way she did. She's from a different school than I went to. And so, you know, kids started crying and, and yelling and kind of doing, doing like that there. Ah! You 
big old boy. It wasn't no little big, you know. And, and, and so, mother said, okay, now, you're going to get him when we get home. you got to stop this. You're going to be on punishment. I'm like, yeah, I'm punishment now. But, but then mother did something else. You know, he just stood there, he's doing this like this. Uh, he wanted something. She said, no, you're not getting it. I figured she'd go, you know, because I saw that. That's all I figured she was doing, give it to him anyway. She got her basket, she went home. She said, you can stay there and, and, and holler. When you get finished, you'll have to find me. Thank you. I said, she playing. Oh, she playing. Oh, she just went home. Oh, well, he ran on, ran up further and got in front of the basket. <laughs> and she just went around him. <laughs> She just went around him, he, and he tried to, you know, he would stand in the hollow for a second, and, and, you know, I was, you know, I'm going to be real, it just caught my attention, I still, so I was, like, falling, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to appear like I was stalking him, but I wanted to know, I want to see how this going to turn out, because I was, I was kind of, like, against her in the beginning, but now I'm starting to, hey, she got some technique, <laughs> But here's what happened. The father showed me. He said, this is what you do all the time in the spirit. Ooh. He said, you've been doing all this in the spirit. You keep trying to get before me. Ah, do, 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 do. And I say, not yet, Ken. Mm. Mm. Now's not the time. Mm. Mm. Stay right there. Mm. And so father, father says, stay right there. Mm. Be still. You ever heard father said, be still and know I'm God. The father just kind of he, he just kind of moves on. He said, "Oh no 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 no!" That does not move God. And he's not moving. No, he is not. He's not moving. No, no, one bit. No. Oh, yeah, Father said, "You're not going to get it until you line up with my will." Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah, that's good. Look around. Mm. So you can, does it make sense to you about your prayer? Mm. Yes. Make any sense about your prayer? Let me do this. Yes. I'm, I'm just about finished. I don't want to come back on this subject next week if I don't have to. Whew. Okay, let's stop. Hey, good Yes, yes. 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 See, see the Father, stand up for me. Just stand up for me where you at. Just stand up for you. Uh, the Father really, one of the things I want you to understand, God wants intimacy. Intimacy. God wants us to be intimate with Him. Look at that word. Intimacy is one of the sayings, into me. God says, I want you to be into me. I want you to be into me. Ah. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you like this here. The Father said, this is your season to move closer. You don't get to run anymore. You know how I'm like, I can't do that. That's not who I am. God said, it doesn't matter what you feel is factoring in. He says, I'm calling you. In fact, you may not like it where people talk to you out in front, but the Father said, I'm calling you. That's some good stuff, huh? He says, we're going even if we don't want to go. And the bad thing about it, Pastor, you know, we've been trying to make people go. But the Father says they're going, but you don't have to make them go because they're going at my pace. Amen. So they may not go with you, but they're going. And he says, I don't want you to pull a dead weight. So you know what was interesting? I understand now why the lady wasn't dragging that boy on. Because being back in the day, we probably would have just dragged you. Come on, here you go. Embarrassing me. She said, I'm not. Obviously, she wasn't there. You just embarrass yourself. Did y'all see yourself before the father? Yeah. That's embarrassing, isn't it? Yeah. To know that we, we adults, yeah. we grown up, but we haven't matured. Yeah. The father's calling you. In this place. Spiritually the word bears witness. That God said it's by my spirit. Amen. 
It's by my spirit. And he says, I want to show you things that you cannot see. Things that you cannot understand. How can I do it? How can I do it? He says, I'm going to do it in and through you. To our listening audience, we thank God. We praise God for you being with us today. I pray that this word has been a blessing to you. I pray that you hear and receive what thus said this word of the Lord. God wants to take you deeper, deeper, and give you substance in your spirit like never before. It's a season to grow and mature in Christ Jesus' name. So let me pray with you, my beloved. Gracious Father, we thank you, we praise you for what you have spoken. And we pray that you said your word will not return to you void. And so we thank you that the word will accomplish the work. And those that are listening, that they become doers, sustainers of your work to do with us here at the Spirit of the Lord. And so I thank you that they're blessed, promoted, and moving forth. I pray that God bless you. And I pray that if this word has blessed you, that you in turn will be willing to bless this ministry. And listen. They, they should have it at some point, let you know that there's different ways to give. But I want to tell you, share with us as we share with you. Now, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. For the word works if you will work the word. Amen.